Almost one year has passed since the March 11th tsunami, but still some areas remain without electricity. To help make life a little easier for survivors, an initiative is underway that's brightening up communities and bringing a spark back into people's lives. Signs of damage caused by tsunami are evident everywhere you look along the coastline of Ishinomaki in Miyagi Prefecture. This street ramp doesn't work. You need a flashlight to walk around at night. The Onosaki district used to be home to 200 residents, but most of them have moved away. The isolated district is still cut off from the main electricity grid. Even so, the few remaining residents have not been left completely in the dark. The community now has one street light, lit by solar power. The lamp post was set up by Takayuki Ninuma. He's taking part in a project to help provide survivors with alternative energies such as solar power. On this day, solar panels were installed outside a damaged building in Onosaki. First light since March 11th. <laughs> Ninuma is himself a survivor. He lost to his home in Ofunato, in Iwate Prefecture, north of Miyagi. Everything's gone. After the disaster, Ninuma evacuated to his brother's house. There, he and his family were forced to live without electricity for more than a month. That's when he got a better understanding of the importance of electricity and where he first learned about the project to bring solar power to the devastated areas. I was simply amazed by how much power solar panels can provide. Those small things can even power TVs. Eager to help people forced to live under harsher circumstances than himself, Ninima joined the project. He busied himself learning about solar power technologies, something he had never given any thought to before. The initiative is also providing encouragement to survivors to take up their previous occupations. Shige Ogawa has been farming oysters in the Onosaki district for years. His house is now fitted with solar panels, compliments of Ninma's group. Ogawa lives in a temporary housing unit a 30 minutes drive from his house, but he still stays at home when he's busy with his oysters. It's been two months since he got his oysters farm back in operation. Ogawa is now hoping to repair his house and move back in the future. I can't leave this place because the ocean provides me with my livelihood. I have no choice but to rebuild my life here. I want to help people return to their homes by providing them with electricity. The ravages of nature may have ripped apart many people's lives, but the benefits of nature are also helping restore people's lives. Susumu Kojima joins us from our studio in Sendai. Susumu, uh, we saw a couple of people there that benefited from this uh, uh, solar panel. Uh, how have local people been reacting to the project to restore electricity in cutoff areas? Takayuki Ninuma says when the solar panels turned the lights back on, some people were so happy they started crying. NGOs and, and solar panel manufacturers launched the project one month after the March 11 disaster. They initially installed solar panels and solar heating systems at evacuation centers. It was considered emergency assistance because there was no electricity. They have so far worked at about 640 locations. Now, 
they are shifting their activities to supporting reconstruction, such as providing electricity to a local small ship builder. Obviously, this doesn't come for free, both labor-wise and equipment-wise. What additional challenges are they facing? Well, the lack of funding is the biggest one. The project still needs at least $1.5 million. In Japan, renewable energy has not been as popular as in Europe. Public support for solar power is not strong enough to raise money. But more people in the country have high expectations for renewable energy following the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. So members of the project believe this is the best opportunity not just to help reconstruction of the region, but also to get nationwide backing for renewable energy. All right, thanks for that, Susuma. NHK World, Susuma Kojima in our Sendai studio. French nuclear energy giant Arriva, well, it suffered a huge loss in 2011 due to business hardships that followed the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident. Arriva has announced that it posted a net loss totaling 2.4 billion euros. That's roughly $3.2 billion last year. The company traces the loss to a massive decline in the value of its uranium mining venture in Africa. Arriva also said says the production of plutonium mixed fuel for Japan has stalled since the disaster. The rippling effects of the Fukushima accident are forcing the world's leading nuclear conglomerate to scale down its business. Arriva plans to cut up to 1,500 jobs in Germany following the country's decision to phase out nuclear power generation.